To get in to see Miss Weld, I'd lied and said I was sent by the studio. I was met at Mavis's apartment by Dolores Gonzalez. I recognized her and made the mandatory compliment on her last picture. Are you quite sure you have the stills, amigo? They are usually a little too big to put in your pocket. Her voice was cool. She looked almost as hard to get as a haircut. For Miss Weld personally. Sorry. I told you she was taking a bath. I'll wait. I am most fully aware that you are a damned liar and that you have no stills in your pockets. Perhaps you would like to help her. The bathroom is up there, through the arch and to the right. Most probably the door is not locked. Not if it's that easy. Oh, you like to do the difficult things in life. I must remember to be less approachable. Don't bother, Miss Gonzalez. I'm just a guy who came here on business. You may call me Dolores, if you wish. So glad you two got acquainted. It was the voice I'd heard at the hotel. The name is Philip Marlowe. Nice, don't you think? I didn't know you bothered to ask them their names. Such a charming way to insult a girl. At least I haven't been sleeping with any gunmen lately. Are you sure you can remember? Open the door, honey. This is the day we put the garbage out. On your way, dreamboat. Make with the feet. I came here on business, Miss Weld. Out. I don't know you. I don't want to know you. And even if I did, this wouldn't be either the day or the hour. Never the time and the place and the loved one all together. What's that? Browning. The poet, not the automatic. I feel sure you'd prefer the automatic. Look, little man, do I have to call the manager to bounce you downstairs like a basketball? If you're going to stand that close to me, maybe you better put some clothes on. Did I hurt you? That's fine. I think you'd better kiss me. Believe me, there's only one reason I don't. I might just happen to start working for you. I'm free, white, and 21. I've seen all the approaches there are. I think I have. If I can't scare you, lick you, or seduce you, what the hell can I buy you with? Well... Oh, don't tell me. Money, of course. Money would help. How much money? Oh, a hundred bucks would do to start with. It's a cheap little bum, isn't it? Is a hundred bucks money in your circle, darling? Make it two hundred. I could retire on that. Still cheap. Every week, of course, in a nice, clean envelope. You could skip the envelope. I'd only get it dirty. And just what do I get for this, my charming little gumshoe? How did she know I was a detective? I could reach for my notebook and ask her. Or I could put on my hat and leave. But make one thing clear before I left. You'd get a receipt. Who told you I was a gumshoe? It must have been the smell. I'm beginning to think you write your own dialogue. I've been wondering what was the matter with it. Ah. And with that, I believe I must have used up my entire stock of girlish charm. I never thought you killed him. But it would help to have some sort of a reason for not telling them you were there. My goodness. Am I supposed to have killed somebody? Look, you're going to find this hard to believe, but I came over here with the quaint idea that you might be a girl who needed some help. But you're not in any jam. You don't need me. You don't need anybody. You're so damn smart you could talk your way out of a safe deposit box. Okay, go ahead. Talk your way out. Just don't make me listen to it. She didn't move or breathe when I reached the door, nor when I opened it. I don't know why. The stuff wasn't that good. I left Miss Weld's. Where should I go now? Mr. Marlowe, no doubt. My name is Toad, Joseph P. Toad. It's a little late for a business call. I hope you don't mind. I trust you don't already have all the business you can handle, Mr. Marlowe. Don't kid me. My nerves are frayed. Who's the junkie with the gun? Oh, come along, Alfred, and stop acting girlish. This is where were you? Mr. Toad and Alfred explained the purpose of their visit. Toad explained. Alfred twitched. They were here to offer me $500 to stop investigating. I asked if that meant they were connected to the blonde. Toad implied that I might know too much already and suggested that I talk to Sheridan Ballou, a Hollywood agent who handled Mavis Weld.
And that was from their latest record, They Really Can Sing, Can't They? Turning now to the local news, sources close to the investigation of the Flophouse murder reported that both the murder at the Flophouse and the murder at the Van Nuys Hotel were committed with ice picks, which suggests that the two murders might have been committed by one murderer. No one is speculating on the motive, and the police have so far refused to comment. The question was, where to next? I had already chewed my way through the Los Angeles paper, which contained no item about ice picks or the Van Nuys or any other hotel. The Bay City News wasn't too busy to write up a murder, though. They put it on the first page, right next to the price of meat. Uh, eight in large prints from your negative. It is Mr. Hicks, isn't it? I went out and sat in my car and looked over the catch. The print showed a couple sitting in a booth in a restaurant. The tablecloth was covered with tiny figures of dancing couples. That made the restaurant the dancers. The girl was Mavis Weld. The man I didn't recognize. I figured it must have been a hidden camera trick. It wasn't too hard for me to guess who had taken the picture. Mr. Oren P. Quest must have moved fast and smooth to get out of there with his face still on the front of his head. When the phone started ringing, I let it ring. I had had enough for one day. Could have been the Queen of Sheba with her cellophane pajamas on. Instinct was stronger than weariness. Oh, Mr. Marlowe, I've been trying to get you for the longest time. I'm so upset. I, I'm... Later. But I tell you, I have to see you. Uh-huh. You, you kissed me. I've kissed better since. I've heard from Oren. You're a nice little liar. Goodbye. But I really have. He called me on the telephone right here where I'm staying. Fine. Then you don't need a detective after all. I couldn't even find out where you were staying. I wrote to him where I'd be staying. Uh-huh. Only he didn't get the letter because he had moved and he didn't leave any forwarding address. Remember? Goodbye, Miss Quest. And you don't have to tell me where you're staying. I'm not working for you. Very well, Mr. Marlowe. I'm ready to call the police now, but I don't think you'll like it. Why? Because there's murder in it, Mr. Marlowe. And murder is a very nasty word, don't you think? Come on up. I'll wait. There were two murders she could be referring to, and I was involved in both. Obstruction of justice was the least of the crimes they could charge me with. I'd had enough of Miss Orphame Quest, and I was going to pour myself a drink and tell her so. She was a liar and a chiseler, but then, the case was more tangled than I ever thought it would get, and I might still need to find out what was going on, if only to prove my own innocence. It's nice of you to wait for me. Don't mention it. Do you want to talk about the murder? I don't really know very much. Oren called, and he said that that horrible man, the manager at the rooming house, he was killed. And your brother? How is he? He said he was all right, but he wouldn't tell me where he was. But he did get in touch with you, and he's all right. That's the important thing. I wouldn't worry if I were you, Miss Quest. He found out where you were staying. Even I couldn't do that. No, Mr. Marlowe, there's something wrong. I can't say how I know. I just feel it. Orrin is stubborn. He'll never admit there's something he can't handle. You said yourself he could be in real trouble. He must have had something important to tell you. What was it? Orrin said he knew I was in California. He said I should go home. I asked him where he was, and he told me that horrible flop house. Did you believe him? I wasn't sure. I told him I knew where it was. That's when he told me to stay away from it, because of the murder, and because he wasn't really staying there. All right. He didn't have a job. He might be out of money. Is there anyone out here he'd go to? Any relation or friend of the family? No. Stop hiding the truth. He could be staying with your sister, Layla, couldn't he? He's down on his luck. He needs a little help. Orrin would never ask Layla for help. Never. We were never grand enough for her, Mr. Marlowe. And after she left, she never helped us, even though she could have. And really, she should have, but she never did. Please, Mr. Marlowe, you have to find him for me. Since your brother already knows where you are, Miss Quest, you can give me your temporary address and telephone number now. Oh, no. 
If I did that, I wouldn't get to come and see you in your office. And I like seeing you. I really do. I told her I'd stay on the case, and she thanked me. Then she was gone. I was here to talk to Mr. Ballou about Mavis Weld. Mr. Ballou had sent two punks to scare me and I might get further with Mr. Hollywood agent if I showed him some force. Or I could do it civilly with my hat in my hands. After all, he was in a civilized industry, wasn't he? The girl is a client of mine, of course. That fellow that's with her is the chap that owns the dancers, name of Steelgrave. All I see is two people having lunch in a public place on a certain date. Hardly disastrous to the reputation of my client. What were you thinking of asking? You don't want to buy anything, Mr. Ballou. I could have had another negative made. That's not much of a sales pitch for a blackmailer. She's close to the big money. That picture would stop her cold if I were to show it to the Johns downtown. Why would the police be interested? I'd first have to connect it up with something that happened at the Van Nuys Hotel. I'd connect it up through Mavis Weld, who won't talk to me. Yes, she warned me about you. Said a private detective named Marlowe had tried to force her to hire him. On the grounds that she was seen in a downtown hotel, inconveniently close to where a murder was committed. She also told you that if somebody didn't shut my mouth, she would be in a lot of trouble. So you sent over a couple of hard boys. It didn't work. The man who took that photo is missing and can't be found. He's probably dead. Two other men who lived at the same address are dead. One of them is trying to peddle those pictures just before he got dead. She didn't get the delivery, and neither did the killer. They didn't know where to look. And you did. I was lucky. She wanted that picture. Getting it was worth an awful chance. Why? It's just two people having lunch on a certain day. The day Mo Stein was shot to death on Franklin Avenue. The day a character named Steel Grave, the man in that picture, was supposed to be in jail because the cops got a tip. He was a Cleveland Red Hot named Weepy Moyer. What do you really want, Marla? I left the office with a pass and the stage number Mavis Weld was working on. And I use it myself, and you can believe me, it works. In related news, police are looking for a mystery woman in connection with the murder at the Van Nuys Hotel. 
Witnesses have reported seeing a well-dressed blonde woman entering the dead man's hotel room shortly before his murder. No motive for the crime has been discovered, but sources say the dead man had registered at the hotel under an assumed name. The Dream Factory. Miss Weld was at work on stage 17. Somebody let you in here. Who? Why? That takes explaining. She'd started right up where she'd left off. She was in big trouble. I was already involved, and I could take care of myself and her. Still, I had a notebook full of unanswered questions about Mavis Weld. Well, I am here, Miss Weld. Baloo decided to hire me to investigate the attempted blackmailing of one of his clients. I suppose I'm the one who's being blackmailed? Miss Weld, you're an actress. To make this easier on both of us, why don't you just pretend that you're cooperating with me? What good would that do? Come to my dressing room. It's more private. All right. We'll pretend I'm a defenseless blackmail victim and you're a competent detective. You're not the defenseless type. You brought a gun with you to that hotel room. Meaning what? You'd get what you wanted from him, either by paying him or forcing him. Did you recognize his voice? The other times that he demanded money, was that by telephone? No, I didn't recognize the voice. He'd never called before. So you wouldn't have recognized his voice. But he convinced you he had something you wanted. He must have described it pretty well. You mean that picture? Take a good look at it. It's what you went to the hotel with a gun for. I found the receipt for that picture on the body of the dead man. You may even have found it on the body if you knew where to look. The man in the picture is Mr. Steelgrave, owner of the dancers. I know him. It shows you having lunch with him while he was in jail. That's not possible. That's why it's dangerous. How much do you know about Steelgrave? He owns things. A restaurant or two. He's nice. I like him. Has he ever been in trouble? Who hasn't? With the police? I don't know. You knew enough to pay for this photo. I read your studio bio. Born in Maryland, only daughter of a retired judge, member of the Fox and Hound set, scandalized the family by going into show business. Any of that real? I never even read it, let alone lived it. So none of it's real? Not even the scandal part? Oh, sure. And if I don't eat soon, I'll faint on the set. That will start another scandal. All right, I'll leave. She just sat there and looked at me. All I had to do was turn the knob and go on out. I don't know why it had to be so hard to do. Yes, yes, it's a typical... Car 54, report to Mulholland Drive, an investigator report of illegal gambling. Posh neighborhood, guess those folks figure they can do whatever they want. Mulholland Drive. Isn't that where Steelgrave lives?
I'd given the butler my card. I'd expected him to return and tell me where to wait, but instead Steelgrave himself came out to give me the glad hand. I'd told him that I was looking for a missing man. I'm sorry I can't help you, but uh, I've never seen this man. I got a tip that Quest had frequented your club. I was hoping maybe you'd recognize him. I see. Uh, but it could be your sources are wrong. I never forget a face. I've never seen him. Maybe he didn't come to the club. He lived at 449 Idaho Street in Bay City. Maybe you know him from there. It's a dope house. I don't mean to be abrupt, but I have several appointments to keep. I'd like to clear the air. I'm an entrepreneur with several companies. I own buildings, stock, undeveloped properties. I have nothing to do with drugs in any form. I resent your slander, Mr. Marlowe. If you persist in it, I'm sure my lawyer could find it actionable. You'd sue me? Something like that. But only as a last resort. Look, Marlowe, I'm sorry you came all the way out here for nothing. Since I'm on my way out, I'll walk you to your car. There were other places to go and people to interview. There might even be people waiting for me in my office. Where should I go next? The Dancers Club was fabled as a place where famous people come to be treated like ordinary people. It wasn't true, but it made great copy, and the fan magazines ate it up. I recognize you, you're... Marlowe! Philip Marlowe, isn't it? Yes. Hello, Mr. Steelgrave. I've heard it's a small world, but I uh, didn't expect to see you here. What can I do for you? I'm trying to locate a man by the name of Oren P. Quest. It doesn't ring a bell. Should it? Maybe you've never met him, but you might know some of his friends. Lester Clawson, Mile Away Marsden, Dr. Vince. Well, they sound like a colorful bunch, but I don't know them either. What made you think I would? I keep looking for quests, and I keep finding dancer club matches. Ah, a clue. No one has to come to this club to get those matches. We give them to every newsstand at the train station and the airport. Promotes the club. Then there's our mutual friend, the guy who just left your office. I found him at Quest's last known address. Now, that's interesting. Johnny, come on over. Johnny, Mr. Marlowe would like to know if you know a man named Quest. I ain't never heard of him. What were you doing at 449 Idaho Street? I ain't never been there. I guess you were mistaken, Marlowe. No harm done. Dominic, see Mr. Marlowe to his car. So, Mr. Steelgrave wasn't going to cooperate. The question now was, where to next? Hello, amigo. I waited a long time. I could not reach you. The accent's a bit thick this evening. I'm not in an amusing mood tonight, amigo. You don't have to amuse me. I amuse myself. You always wear black? But yes. This is more exciting when I take my clothes off. Do you ever think of anything but one thing? This is how I catch fools, amigo. Some fools are useful and generous. Occasionally, one is dangerous. I know who he is. I probably can't prove it. The cops couldn't. They do not always prove all they can prove. I suppose you know he was in jail for 10 days last February? Yes. He was my boyfriend also. Curious. I could offer her a chair and find out what she thought was important enough to bring her here. Or I could concentrate on learning more about the lady herself. Was she an innocent bystander or one of the major players? Believe it or not, Miss Gonzalez, I'm not interested in your love life. I assume it covers a wide field, all the way from Stein to Steelgrave. Stein? Who is Stein? A Cleveland hotshot that got himself gunned in front of your apartment house last February. And you were looking out of the window and saw it happen. And darned if the killer was an old man Steelgrave. But Steelgrave was in jail. And even if he was not in jail, even if, for example, I happened to be friendly with a certain Dr. Chalmers, who was county jail physician at the time, and he told me in an intimate moment that he had given Steelgrave a pass to go to the dentist on the very day Stein was shot, even if this happened to be true, would it not be a very poor way to use the information by blackmailing Steelgrave? It is enough that Mavis Wells is a close friend of a known gangster. Mavis has started the crime, and nothing will stop her, except possibly a bad scandal. We'd have to prove Steelgrave was a known gangster. We can't. And even if we could, 
What's he doing all the time we're putting the bite on Weld? Does he have to know? I hardly think she would tell him. But that would not matter to us if we had our proof. I might happen to be under some obligation to Miss Weld. Ever think of that? And if that was so, don't you think it was about time you got out of my office? I scooped the envelope from the bag before she could change direction. She made a spitting sound. Where'd you get this? In Mavis Wells' dressing room. Give it back to me. If you do not... I'll give it back to Miss Weld. Very well. It is my mistake. This shabby little office. It ought to tell me what sort of idiot you are. It does. The way she went out hadn't been learned in business college. The city council demanded that action be taken against the organized criminal element in Los Angeles. He pointed to the mob connections that surround the two ice pick murders as evidence that gangsters are operating in the city with impunity. The police commissioner is a